Good afternoon. Welcome to the weekly livestock market update. I'm Brownfield anchor reporter Megan Grabner with us as always to talk all things markets, University of Missouri, Scott Brown. Good afternoon, Scott. Good afternoon, Megan. <laughs> it is a very big week for us. So let's get into the numbers and recap what happened this week in the markets to kick things off. Uh, yeah, if we start on the cattle side this week, uh, cash cattle down a quarter on the week. Those uh, feeder cattle markets were steady to three dollars higher on the week. On the future side, the October live cattle futures contract uh, was down twenty cents, and the uh, October feeder cattle futures contract was actually up ninety cents this week. Uh, on the beef side, the choice box beef price uh, lost eleven dollars and a quarter. Uh, that now puts it about ninety-two dollars above uh, where it was a year ago. We had a lot of weakness in ribs, uh, loins, and briskets uh, this week. Uh, on the hog side, cash barrel and gilt prices uh, were $1.87 uh, lower this week, and while the uh, October lean hog futures contract was up $1.80. Uh, the pork cattle value also gained this week uh, up $1.50. That was really driven by what was some stronger belly prices. It's going to be interesting to watch just how these numbers continue to, to ebb and flow. We've seen the the consistent decline in cash hog prices recently for the most part. Are, are we concerned or is this kind of where what we're maybe going to consider our new normal for, for at least uh, the interim? Yeah, so to, to me, more, maybe a little more volatility than we've been used to historically, just given everything that uh, goes on in, in these markets that have led to additional uncertainty. Uh, you know, I still think labor and transportation and distribution uh, continue to be one of the, the issues that continues to, to add to the volatility that we have uh, in, in these markets. Let's talk slaughter numbers. Uh, as we look at this week, a decline on the cattle side of things uh, and kind of consistently settling in, in in these for these numbers or these ranges for both cattle and hogs week after week. Yeah, now if, you, if we look at the uh, week ending September 25th, USDA is estimating 641,000 head of cattle. That is 16,000 head uh, below where we were a week ago and, and about the same number, 14,000 head below a year ago levels. Uh, on the hog side this week, a run of 2.578 million head of hogs. That's 41,000 head above uh, last week and 28,000 below where we were a, a year ago at this time. You know, you think about those hog numbers and and even with the hogs and pigs report we got today, I think we still uh, are going to have some bigger runs as we continue to go through the latter quarter of uh, 2021. All right, let's get into those reports. It's been a busy week <laughs> for the folks at USDA. Let's start and talk cold storage and take a look at those beef numbers first. Yeah, you know, if you look on the beef side of, of the equation, uh, beef in freezers at the end of August was uh, 415 million pounds. Uh, that was uh, nearly 8% below where we were a year ago uh, and, and uh, almost 13% below what the, was the five-year average. Uh, so tight stocks uh, happening on the beef side. Uh, if we switch and look at pork and uh, cold storage, it was estimated at 460 uh, million pounds. That's 1% below a year ago. Uh, so a little tighter there. And I'll uh, make sure we recall that pork ending stocks have been running well below year ago levels. Uh, for a, a period of time, and, and that really started back in May of 2020. Uh, belly stocks, for example, below 20 million pounds certainly sticks out as uh, reasonably tight at this point in time. That doesn't bode well for my bacon prices, Scott. It doesn't. Uh, uh, we, we certainly have tightened or continue to see things fairly tight. Uh, you, you know, you look at all three, beef, pork, and poultry, 14% uh, below year ago levels. And, and I'll say, I think it's hard at these kinds of prices uh, to build freezer inventories. And that's certainly showing up in the data that we have. All right, let's talk livestock slaughter numbers. Another big month for beef production. That's right. So 2.37 billion uh, pound, 2.36 billion pounds of uh, beef produced. That's 1% above where we were in 2020. Uh, that was really led by what was stronger cattle slaughter up 3%, uh, uh, not being offset by what was 1.8% uh, lower dressed weight. So uh, 
more beef production in August. Uh, we look at the other side of the equation when we look at the pork uh, numbers that we got out. Uh, hog slaughter down four and a half percent. Hog dressed weights down nine tenths of one percent. I got us pork production for August down 5.4 percent relative to a year ago. Now year to date, uh, that leaves pork production 1.2 uh, percent uh, below year ago levels. So um, less pork on the market. I don't think we want to forget that. Uh, that's been part of the, the discussion as we think about 2021 uh, pork supplies. And the demand aspect of that as well is something that I would assume we're also, we also need to consider or continue to watch, especially as we've seen fairly strong demand, both domestically and in, on the global market for U.S. pork. Yeah, absolutely. So we're getting fewer supplies and on top of that strong demand, that's a good recipe for higher prices. And, and you know, you look back and much of the reason why I think we've seen such strong pork prices uh, here in 2021. So we, we do need the demand side to say to stay strong with us as we move forward. All right, let's start first. Uh, the biggies came out today, hogs and pigs and quarterly, or quarterly hogs and pigs and cattle on feed. Let's start first with that hogs and pigs report uh, and take a look at the numbers that came out of it. Yes, yeah, so, well, there's all kinds of information one can glean here out of uh, hogs and pigs, all of which uh, makes things more positive maybe for uh, hog producers as we get into 2022, but uh, starting with the breeding herd, uh, down uh, nearly 3%, 2.7% uh, uh, in, in the numbers that we got out for September. Uh, that was a, a inventory of 6.19 million head of breeding inventory in that September report. I, I, I want to make sure we make the point that, so if you think about what normally happens from uh, June to September, we normally talk about an increase, a seasonal increase in breeding inventory, roughly to the two and a half a percent. Uh, what we got out of this report was a decline of a half a percent. So relatively positive. That uh, breeding inventory number came in uh, uh, 1.2 points below uh, the pre-report average guess. So fewer breeding inventory. Uh, you start looking at the rest of the numbers, they all get pr pretty positive as well. June through August, pig crop uh, down 94% uh, of a year ago. Uh, the pre-report estimate was 96.6. So uh, smaller pig crop uh, out of that. Uh, uh, pigs per litter came in pretty close to what we would have expected. Uh, 100.6 was the June through August pigs per litter. Uh, that was just right near the midpoint of pre-report estimates. The fairwings. Uh, June through August fairings at 93.4. To me, that's the one that sticks out the most. Pre-report was at 96.3. So three points below pre-report uh, midpoint uh, certainly uh, ended up with uh, fewer sows being farrowed. Um, contentions are also uh, relatively uh, bullish, especially the set through November, uh, coming in below uh, pre-report estimates by uh, nearly three percentage points as well. Hog inventory, uh, less than 50 came in at 94.4. Uh, Pre-report midpoint was 98.3. 50 to 119 pounds came in at 94. Pre-report at 98.3. Uh, both those tell us uh, the, those uh, lighter weight hog inventories are, are certainly much tighter than we anticipated. And I think part of that, some revisions that we saw uh, out of the report this time. So USDA revised the December 20 through February 2021 pick crop by about 1.3 million head. And I think that uh, certainly feeds through to then what are some uh, tighter inventories that we see now. So we, this report is fairly positive, but as we look at the global picture, do we get concerned about demand certainty long-term and concerns that this may trigger some expansion? But when we look at the global market and we have all of these different factors, African swine fever, other issues, global COVID recovery. How does this all play into what producers need to think about as they're thinking maybe, okay, there's some higher prices. This is pretty positive. Should we maybe start to increase production again? So I think a couple of things I'll say to that for producers, you know, number one, if we get uh, futures markets that uh, 
take off next week as a result of uh, what, what we're seeing out of this report. There might be a time to take advantage of some of those higher prices yet again, um, because as you correctly point out, uh, the, the prices we'll see at the end of the day, it's not just the supply side that's gonna matter here. What does happen to demand in front of us? What would happen if we have ASF uh, outbreak here in the US? You know, All those things are still at play. I just think it might give us some opportunity for some, at least some higher uh, futures prices that maybe I want to take advantage of, you know, as, as a producer, um, more and more, I say, we get this volatility coming from what's the demand side of the picture, uh, not the supply side of the picture. It's just nice to have a report that to me suggests maybe not a lot of expansion in pork production uh, in 2022, which is not what, uh, many would have expected uh, pre this report. And here I am trying to t- take your sunshine away asking <laughs> some of these questions. I have enough, I have another question. I'm actually gonna save it for next week um, and, and give you time to, to chew on that. And I think we also need to talk about uh, non-meat proteins coming to market again. I know there's one that's launching tomorrow. And I think we need to have a conversation at some point about how that triggers the demand picture and, and how the consumer uh, lays out to that. But I'll, we'll wait because we, <laughs> we have plenty more to get through uh, yet. Uh, let's talk c- cattle on feed. Uh, those numbers came out this afternoon. And um, I would say there's one maybe little surprise in that report. Yeah, so so maybe a, and I, I don't want to be overly bearish in terms of what we got on cattle on feed. You know, so first of all, on feed September one at ninety eight point six, uh, that, that's a little above the pre report average guess, but but only by half a, a point. Uh, the 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 number that could be a little bearish here for us is uh, cattle placed in August uh, that came in at one hundred two point three. Uh, that's three points above. Uh, the, the pre-report estimate that was a 99.3. So more cattle placed in August than we would have thought pre-report. Um, we'll have to wait and see uh, what that does for cattle markets. But uh, when you look at the feed numbers, they came in pretty much where we would have uh, expected uh, again pre-report. So as we take a look at that placements number specifically, does that give us an indication of, of what might set us up in the uh, at, at coming months as it, as it relates to prices? And is this something when we have conversations about risk management, we need to consider as well? So perhaps, and I, I, so I'll say, I wanna make sure we think about this both directions, right? So have we been trying to pull calves in the feed yards a little sooner? Um, the, the data maybe doesn't suggest that in terms of what we got uh, re- relative to a year ago, but with the drought going on in many parts of the country, um, I, I think there's always that idea that if we can get them in the feed yard sooner and get them off the grass, and the, especially in those drought areas, it sure helps us. Uh, so we may have some of that also playing into this. I still think drought is the big uh, issue for us in the cattle industry as we look into the latter, at least the latter part of 2022. Uh, placements that we have here in August might make us a little more bearish in the near term of 2022, but but for me, I still think we'll get out there in the latter part and talk about fewer numbers as drought has played uh, such a, a role in uh, some parts of the country. My next question then is related to the drought. How much are we watching then the next coming months as well to see the continued impact of uh, drought in those larger cattle producing areas? Yeah, so f- for sure. and. And although we, we skipped it in terms of uh, livestock slaughter, we had so much to talk about today. I just would remind us that when you look at beef cow slaughter, uh, year to date, uh, up 196,000 head uh, relative to a year ago. It just tells me, you know, we're, we've been seeing liquidation continuing to occur. Um, we were up uh, 46,000 head, in, <coughs> excuse me, in August of 21, uh, relative to August of 20. Uh, so we really didn't slow down in the data that we got out for August as well in terms of beef cow slaughter. So for me, we're continuing to see that liquidation unfold. I think that plays into this industry uh, longer term. 
think that'll do it for us today. Okay. There is plenty for us to get into. There's plenty for us to talk about week after week. Uh, so we invite you to come back every Friday. Anything else uh, today? I think that's it, Megan. <laughs> All right. As we look ahead to next week, not as much on the, the slate for us to talk about, but we will talk restaurant performance index. What are some things that we're watching for next week? Yeah. So I still think we just want to continue to, to, watch whether that index uh, happily turns down as uh, we deal with COVID-19 and cases of COVID-19. Let's hope we get some more positive data uh, out of that uh, report next week. All right, Scott, always great to see you. We will talk to you next Friday. Sounds good, Megan. So every weekly livestock market update delivered to your email box every Saturday. Go to brownfieldagnews.com. You can submit questions and comments there as well. And uh, for some great podcasts while you're in the cab of the tractor, combine or your truck, go to brownfieldagnews.com slash podcast. Have a great weekend. I'm Megan Grebner for Brownfield.